National Broadcasting Company invites you by transcription to join the chase. There is always the hunter and the hunted, the pursuer and the pursued. It may be the voice of authority or a race with death and destruction, the most relentless of the hunters. There are times when laughter is heard as counterpoint and moments when sheer terror is the theme. But always there is the chase. Listen, doll, I've been in show business for 15 years, but I never seen the likes of what I just went through. Brutal. That's what it was, brutal. I'll need four weeks in Palm Springs to get over it. You must have heard of the firm, Leo Busby and Company. That's me, Hollywood agents with offices in New York, Chicago, and L.A. Well, we're big, doll. Maybe not as big as outfits like Fitz and Fitz or Frank Cooper Associates, but big enough to make a happy nickel. All right, so we're 10 percenters. But that 10 percent looks big, doll, when it comes off a movie star's salary. We only deal in super personalities. Like I was telling Mona Carr in my office that day. I was saying, Mona, it's no use. What's no use? I tried every studio in town. There's nothing open at the moment. What do you mean there's nothing open? Every studio's in production. Supreme Pictures is doing an Italian opus about Catherine de' Medici. Catherine de who? What's the matter with me for the lead? No leads, Moan. What? Now listen, doll, be reasonable. Drake Productions has gone into production in a week with a big number about Amazons. It's going to be absolutely dynamic. All women with spears. Now, there might be a little supporting role. Supporting role? Me? Mona Carr? If you weren't such a runt, I'd slap you down for even making the suggestion. Oh, relax, Mona. You listen to me, Leo Busby. I've been making pictures for 20 years, since I was a 10-year-old kid. How old? All right, 12. And shut your mouth. I've been playing supporting roles for other stars long enough. It's about time I had my own name above the title. Oh, one day, Mona, one not day. Not one day, you skinny little worm. Now. Well, let's not get into personalities, now, Mona. Now, do you hear me? <laughs> now. Oh, my time, Mona. You're ruining the initials. Excuse me. Hello? Busby? Yeah? Come over to my office immediately. Your office? Who am I talking to? You've been dealing with Supreme Pictures long enough to recognize my voice, Busby. Oh, Miss Harrison. Well, I'll be over in 20 minutes, HRH. 20 minutes? Do you think I've got all day to wait for you? I want you immediately. And don't you say anything about this call to anyone, do you hear? What I have to tell you is tremendously important. Top secret. Right, HRH. I'm practically there right now. I gotta go, Doc. You are not leaving here until you promise me a starring part. How can I promise you something like that? Who am I? Vice president in charge of production? That was Henry Harrison who just called you president of Supreme. I gotta meet him right away, Mona. It's important. You not only meet him, but you give him a pitch for me. Now, Mona. I warn you, Leo, I am not accepting any brush-offs. You will either talk him into giving me a contract or else. Listen, Mona, I'm in this to make a buck like anybody else. I'd love to get you what you want, but it's impossible. Is it? That's the honest truth. Star and roles are out for you. If you want me to be brutally frank... Well? Well, there just isn't anything open. All right. All right what? We let it go at that. Now you're being sensible, Mona. Sure. I'm being sensible. I'm being very sensible. In fact, brother, you have no idea how sensible I can really be when I get started. Well, doll, knowing Mona like I do, that last crack she made should have put me on my guard. But my thoughts were on H.R. Harrison and his phone call. And in my mind, two things can't occupy the same place at the same time. H.R.H. is Mr. Hollywood himself, doll. His picture's gross like crazy. He's made more stars than the New York Planetarium. When H.R.H. calls, mine is not to reason why, like the poem says. Mine is but to run in and say... Here I am, H.R.H., at your service. Sit down, Leo. Sure. What I have to tell you now will make history. I'm all agog, H.R.H. First, let me ask you something. Was Valentino great? Yes, H.R.H. John Gilbert, Wallace Reed, were they great? Yes, H.R.H. And Gable, Power, Grant, and Douglas, are they great? Yes, H.R.H. Well, Leo, I have found the greatest of them all. Who? Ah, 
That is the question. What? Let me see if this door is locked. Even the walls have ears. Now, Leo, we must be careful. If another studio steals my finds from under my nose, I'll kill myself. Oh, no, H.R.H. I told you over the phone that this was top secret. Well, I was wrong. This is top, top secret. I call it Operation Star. Three days ago, I took my small son, Harold, to a parade. What's that got to do with the star? Don't interrupt. I am coming to that. Oh, excuse me, H.R.A. Harold, who is a budding genius, took some snapshots at the parade. And one of them had part of the watching crowd in the background. Maybe 30 people. Do I make myself clear? I like Crystal, H.R.A. I happened to look at Sonny's pictures after they were developed to give him some technical advice. Although he's so brilliant, I'm the only one who can teach him anything. Oh, naturally. That's when I saw the crowd picture and the star of the century. Here. Look at this, Busby. The picture? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? Well, which one's the star, H.R.H.? All I see are a bunch of people lying the sidewalk. Of course, that's all you see. That's all anyone sees. What's on the surface? It takes a man of vision to see below. A man of vision, Leo, who also uses a magnifying glass. Now look at the tall young man over here. Through this glass. Say... Handsome? He sure is. Did you ever see such features, such poise, such eclat? I tell you, he's going to be the greatest thing in pictures since they invented actors. What's his name, H.R.H.? Who is he? That's exactly what I want to find out. You don't know? Of course I don't know. All I have is that picture. It's up to you to track him down. Track him down? I'm sending you on a hunt, Leo. A chase to find the biggest moneymaker Supreme Pictures ever had. This will really make Supreme Supreme... Now that I think of it, we'll call this uh, Operation Chase, not Operation Star. It has a more important ring to it. But H.R.H. Wherever that Adonis is now, I want to find him. Money's no object, Leo. Spare no expense. But just make certain you don't spend more than 50 a day. Incidentally, this entire thing must be done on the QT. We got to look for him in secret? No newspaper advertising for him. No radio contests and so on. No one in Hollywood must know who we're after. Or we may be scooped by sincere productions or, or some other outfit of that ilk. You mean you want me to find one man out of I don't know how many in L.A. without even letting anyone know I'm doing it? That's impossible, H.R.H. Impossible is a word no one uses in my presence, Busby. Oh, don't get me wrong, H.R.H. I'm willing to give this a try, a big try. But you'll admit it's going to be kind of hard to see where to begin. I'll leave the entire hunt up to you, Leo. You'll be master of your own destiny. And incidentally, that destiny will include a very fat contract for this young man with you as his representative. How much will you start him off with? Leo. Leo, I'm surprised at you. My chagrin is boundless. How can you talk of money at a time like this? Well, if he's going to be my client... First, we must find him. And then we can proceed to the more sordid details. Can I take the picture with me? Yes. But guard it well, my boy. Guard it well. Good luck to you, Leo. I give you my blessing... On Operation Chase. Well, doll, saying no to H.R. Harrison would have been like filing a petition of bankruptcy. So there was nothing I could do but follow orders. All I had was a snapshot. A rotten one at that. I didn't know how to start or where. <laughs> the guy might not even be in L.A. anymore for all I knew. As long as H.R.H. made me keep it so secret, I couldn't even blow up the picture and put it in the papers. What I figured I needed was a detective, a private eye. So I looked up one near Vine and Sunset and dropped into his office. Yeah? Where's uh, Mervyn Ogilby? You're looking at him now. Ah, my name is Busby. Got a case for you. Divorce evidence? No, nothing like that. Lose a relative? Uh, not exactly, but I am trying to locate somebody. Who? Oh. I don't know. Why? Well, I don't know his name, but I got a photograph. Yeah. How many people are you searching for? There's a mob in this picture. Well, just one. Uh, you look at the picture through this magnifying glass here. Uh, you, you see that uh, tall, handsome guy there in the, in the middle? Yeah. Well, that's him. Where was this picture taken? At a parade in downtown L.A. last week. Can you find him for me? What do you think I am, a magician? I've got to have some leads to go by. I don't have any leads. You're a detective, aren't you? Go ahead and detect. Okay. I'll see what I can do. Oh, what's your fee? Fifty a day in expenses. Well, that's kind of high. If you're looking for charity, try somewhere else. All right, all right. It's a deal. 
When will I hear from you? As soon as I got news. Now, when will that be? Maybe tomorrow. Maybe never. When you're chasing a shadow, you never know. Well, there's only one hitch. Yeah, what? This has got to be kept a secret. No publicity, you understand? That's important. You got any other ways of making it harder for me? Now, here's my card. I'll be waiting for your call. Well, Doc, five days went by, and I didn't hear a word from Merv. By this time, HRH is getting jumpy, and I'm keeping busy trying to calm him down. What do you mean you've got no use? Well, a thing like this takes time, HRH. Well, I'm getting impatient. Yeah, I know, I know. And I want results. Well, I'll find him, HRH. I'll find him if, if I have to crawl all over L.A. on my hands and knees. Just go along with me for a while. See that you get in touch with me immediately when you do. Carry on, Busby, with Operation Chase. Oh. Mona. Good morning, Leo, darling. Now, Mona, I'm busy now. Oh, I, I... not too busy to talk to me. Well, listen, I got big things in the fire. Come in some other time like a good doll, huh? So you got big things on the fire, have you? What big things, Leo? A handsome, blonde, young giant, for instance, who was photographed at a parade? How'd you know about him? I know a lot more than you think I do. Sweetness. Keep it quiet, will you, Mona? Uh, at least he's found. He has been found. What? I repeat, you nauseating little man. He has been found. You're kidding. Remember Mervyn Ogilby, the private detective you went to? You know about him, too. Hmm. Mervyn got me the evidence of my last three divorces. And he's crazy about me. He found your man. But he's not turning him over to you without my permission. I don't believe it. Get me Mervyn Ogilby's office, quick. You can save yourself a dime on that phone call, my precious little drip. I'm giving you facts. I've got the boy HRH is panting to put under contract, and I am not producing the gent until I get what I want. Hello? Mervyn Ogilby Associates. Ogilby speaks. Oh, uh, this is Leo Busby. Greetings. Did you find my man? Natch, I always break my cases, Mr. Busby. Well, why didn't you call me? Sorry. No could do. Where is he? The fellow you're looking for? Oh, he's in a good place. Well, bring him over to my office. I can't, Mr. Busby. Why not? Didn't you talk to Mona Carr yet? What's she got to do with it? I promised her I wouldn't turn him over without her okay. Hey, who are you working for, Mona Carr or me? Who's paying you anyway? I'll give you my feedback if you want it. But no boy until Mona says so. This is blackmail, Ogilvy. With me, it's love. Hello? 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 I told you not to waste your time, shrimp. All right, Mona. What do you want? The handsome? What do you think? I warn you, Mona, you can ruin yourself in the business if you try to hijack HRA. And I can make a deal with another studio by turning handsome over. He's quite a looker from what I've heard. All right, Mona, you win. What's the proposition? Suppose we go over to HRH's office, so I won't have to repeat myself. Give him a ring, Peanut, and tell him we're on our way. Well, Dal, 20 minutes later, Mona was putting the burning cigarette butts to HRH's bare feet. When it came to turning on the heat, the dame was an old pro. And no matter how H.R.H. squirmed, he couldn't get out of her stranglehold. This is outrageous. Well, now, take it easy, H.R.H. Remember your liver. Never mind my liver. This woman is trying to blackmail me. Don't be silly, Mr. Harrison. I'm giving you something for nothing. Not only do you get the woman's home companion under contract, but you also get me. And you know what my name will mean at the box office. I certainly do. Well, take it or leave it. Star billing in your new opus or no handsome Harry for Supreme Pictures. All right. You can have your contract. But on one condition. What's that? We get this boy signed up first. And what's going to prevent you from handing me the well-known double cross? Henry Harrison's word is as good as his bond. Well, uh, I'd still like to see it on paper. Oh, Molly, you can trust HRH. I'm a witness to deal. You're safe enough. Well, all right. But if anything goes wrong, you little weasel, I will have your head on a platter with an apple in your mouth. Where is he? Your new find? Mervyn's got him in a small hotel downtown. Is he as handsome as he looks? Even handsomer. 
Mervyn doesn't know much about pictures, but when I asked him a few questions, he said this guy he located couldn't walk down the street without having strange women try to tear chunks out of his hair. Just as I thought. The attraction of the century. The ladies will be fighting like cats to get into the theaters just to look at him. Leo. Leo, go down to this Mervyn Ogilvy's office and arrange to pick the boy up immediately. Right, H.R.H. Wait. We still have to maintain secrecy. Operation Chase isn't finished until I have his name on a contract. Maybe you'd better get a police escort. Oh, you think that's necessary? Who knows? If one of the other studio heads lays eyes on him, they might kidnap him. Yeah, they might. Wait. I've got a great idea. Yes, H.R.H. We'll bring him over in an ambulance. An ambulance? I'll hire a private one then no one will even suspect Oh, but H.R.A. You've got your orders, Busby. Carry them out. Our next stop was Mervyn Ogilvy's office. And from there, we drove to a third-rate hotel near Oliveira Street. Mervyn led us up a flight of dingy stairs to a room on the second-floor rear, where my new million-dollar client was waiting. Well, how did you locate him so fast, Mr. Ogilvy? Trade secret. But I'll give you a hint. If you look real close at that photograph you gave me, you'd have seen that the boy you were after was leaning on some kind of a sign. I had the photo blown up to 20 times its size, and I saw it was a sandwich sign. A sandwich sign? Sure. With an ad on it. He was carrying around for a couple of bucks a day, and he just took it off for a minute to relax and watch the parade. I checked with the firm who had the ad on the sign, and they told me where he was living. Can you imagine... Carrying a sandwich sign around for cakes and coffee and uh, not knowing he's slated to be the biggest box office draw since Bingo. Oh, it's a small world, hmm? Did you talk to him, Mr. Ogilvy? No. You didn't? I checked with the room clerk downstairs and told him to uh, let me know if the kid made a move to leave the joint. I also waited in the lobby for a couple of hours to get a look at him, make sure he was the right cook. And you saw him? Much. Here's his room. No answer. He must be in. The clerk downstairs said he saw him come in half an hour ago. Try it again. Maybe the door's open. Yeah, it is. Hey, look. The room's empty. The bureau drawers are open. He must have packed and left. And he's a deadbeat. The clerk doesn't know he's gone. I'll call down a check. Oh, wouldn't that kill you? Now we have to look for him all over again. Oh, but he's a fat head. He should have grabbed him and held on to him as soon as he was found. Hey, what's all this green stuff on the floor? Green stuff? Yeah, it looks like soup greens. No, the carrot tops. You mean he's been eating carrot tops in here? Oh, the poor kid. He's probably starving and down to his last dime. He skipped all right. Clerk downstairs and he had a fit. Must have got out of, by the way, the fire escape over there. Now, what do we do now, Sherlock Holmes? We'll have to advertise, that's so. all. I told you we got to keep this under wraps. Then you'll never find him again. Now, listen, we can put a subtle ad in all the newspapers. He likes to be a sandwich man, doesn't he? Okay, we'll advertise with a sandwich man. Give his description. We'll get results, I tell you. I'll have to get HRH's permission first. Then you better go over and talk to him now. And don't forget to remind him that our bargain still stands. Mervyn's still working on the case, and I want my contract if he's found. Say, we don't even know what his name is. I asked the clerk yesterday. It's Jack Dorr. Luke Jackdaw. Jackdaw? Don't ask me why I'm not his godfather. Okay. I'll go over and spill the bad news to HRH. If he doesn't murder me outright, I'll call your office in an hour. I can't believe it. I, who have lived such a decent, upstanding, honest life. I should be persecuted in this fashion. Well, nobody's persecuting you, H.R.A. No? Then what do you call it? I give you a simple assignment, and you louse it up at the last minute. If you'd only let us advertise. Advertise? Why not? What difference does it make now? You mean we can put an ad in the papers for it? An hour ago, I discovered that the news had leaked out. Every studio in Hollywood's got spies out looking for him now. Spies, do you hear? How'd they find out about him? How? Because they have brains working for them, not imbeciles, that's how. When I heard, they knew I didn't care. I thought you had him safely under wraps by then. Now you come and tell me he escaped. Well, it's every studio for itself, H.R.H., so we may as well use everything we got. We'll find him, I promise you. You'd better, because if you don't, Busby, you've collected your last 10%.
Well, we really poured it on, doll. Personals and all the papers, radio announcements. We even stuck his picture up in the post office and offered a reward. But nothing happened. He disappeared into thin air, like they say. We never got a nibble. And to make things worse, by this time, all the other studios were spreading the net, too. It began to look as though even if he was found, we might not get him. But there was one thing I still couldn't figure. I had a hunch it might be an important clue. Those carrot tops in his hotel room. Carrot tops all over the floor. You want to drive through Beverly Hills again? Now we can cover downtown L.A. once more. We'll never find him on the street, Mr. Oglesby. You can't tell. I'll turn left here. Carrot tops. What tops? Carrot tops. What would a guy be doing eating all those carrots? Maybe he was hungry. What is he, a rabbit? When a man's hungry, he buys a sandwich. Carrots are cheaper than a sandwich. That can't be the only reason. All right. Maybe he likes carrots. Oh, sure, he likes carrots. Everybody likes carrots, but that don't mean they eat them by the bushel. Wait, wait. Hey, Mr. Ogilvy. Stop the car, quick! Uh, hey, well, what's the matter? That's yeah. him! Standing over there by that bus stop! Look! He's getting into the bus! We'll head it off two blocks up. First Traffic's getting heavy. We're almost bottled up. Oh, so is the bus. Come on, we'll, we'll park here and make a run for it. We can catch it before the light changes. Okay. Come on, Mr. Ogilvy. Wait! Hey, you bus! Wait for us! We can just make it. Open up! Open up! Here, here, I got the pair. See if you can see. It must be on the other side of the crowd. Ah, oh, the front end. Come on. Here, Let's what push through. Oh, oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, lady. Oh, will you pardon me, please? I'm sorry. It's a big pardon. I mean, I, lady, excuse me. There he is. Up front. He's getting off. Hey, wait. Keep those doors open. No, we want to get out. Leave us out. Get off here! This is an emergency! I'm a private cop! Open that door! Wait, Mr. What happened to him? We got off in the middle of the block. He's gone again. He can't be far away. He must have gone into one of those houses. Come on. We're going to case some more. Well, Dom, for an hour, we went through every house on the block. Most of them were furnished room joints, the kind of places a carrot eater might hide out in. But we didn't have no luck until we hit the next to last place on the street. Small stone dump with a room to let sign in the window. Yeah? Oh, are you the landlady? Who wants to know? We're looking for someone. Yeah? Who? A fellow named Jack, door mother. There's no one here by that name, and I ain't your mother. Well, I guess this one isn't it either. Hey, Mr. Ogilby, look. Huh? Inside near the door, a carrot top. He must be here. Oh, I told that young squirt not to bring his vegetables and in. What's his name? What's whose name? The guy who likes the vegetables. He calls himself Lucas. What's he look like? Well, he's rather good looking, I'd a say. A big blonde Apollo. A big blonde what? Well, I'm a very handsome character. He's blonde, all right. Where is he? He's out now. Oh, he can't be. We, he we might just... have walked back out while we were inside one of the other houses, Mr. Busby. Say, who are you fellas anyway? What do you want with Lucas? It's very important that we locate him. I'm a private detective, see? A I... detective? You mean he's done something? Oh, no, he didn't do anything. This is strictly business. I'm a movie agent, see? We, we want him for pictures. A movie agent? Well, I always wondered how a body got herself a screen test. You want a screen test? <laughs> how do you think I'd make out, huh? Well, look, you help us get Lucas and you're in. Where'd he go? Oh, he just went out to mosey around for a while, but he'll be back. How soon? Can't say. Well, can one of us stay in his room when he returns? Well, that's kind of regular, but uh, 
seeing it's you. Well, you wait here, Marvin. When you grab him, don't let him go. I'll go back and tell HRH the good news. As soon as Lucas or Jack or whatever he calls himself gets back, escort him to HRH's office in style. Well, Dal, he was our boy, all right. I found out later his real name was Lucas Jackdaw. The landlady got a little mixed up. Why don't you see him in pictures? <laughs> to answer that question, I got to tell you what happened in HRH's office about an hour after I left Mervyn Ogilvy. You did a great job, Leo, a great job. You'll always have the undying admiration of Supreme Pictures for your work today. What about me? Oh, you. Yes, me. My contract still stands, doesn't it? It stands all right. Just as soon as I make sure some other studio hasn't already got Jackdaw signed up. Oh, you don't have to worry about that, H.R.H. Ogilvy will be here any minute now. I'm sure this guy hadn't spoken to anybody else. Maybe that's Ogilvy. Uh, come in, come in. Well, he's here. Fine. Bring him in. Inside, Lucas. What's that he's eating? Carrots. Carrots? <clears throat> Mr. Jackdaw, let me congratulate you. We're going to give you a screen contact. What's a screen contract? I beg... I beg your pardon? You fellas must be pulling my leg. What's all the fuss about? Oh. Oh, no, that voice. No, not a voice like that. With such a face. He's a hillbilly. Oh. H.R.H. Oh, oh. He's fainted. Well, Dal, that's how it goes. With a voice like that, we should have found Lucas Jackdaw before they invented sound. As it was a cinch, we couldn't use him now. Mona didn't get a contract. I didn't get my client. And Lucas went back to the hills to eat more carrots. It just goes to show you... Ah, huh, excuse me. Leo Busby and company. Busby, HRH here. Are you alone? Yes, HRH. Make sure, because this is top secret. Super top secret. Come over to my office right away. My wife, who happens to be the smartest woman in Hollywood, was walking through the five and ten the other day when she discovered a real find. Keep this under your hat, Busby. We'll call it In the animal world, there is the hunter and the hunted, hound and fox, hawk and sparrow, chicken and worm. But who is to judge precisely which is the pursuer or the pursued as we enter the chase? <laughs> The Chase was created for the National Broadcasting Company by Lawrence Clee. Heard in the cast were Kermit Murdoch, Leslie Woods, Ed Jerome, Abby Lewis, and Ralph Bell. The Chase is directed and transcribed by Fred Way. Fred Collins speaking. Next week... Circumstantial evidence gets a stranglehold on an innocent man accused of murder in The Chase. This evening, it's Counter Spy on NBC.